there's so much to learn, so much to explore From the surface of the water to the ocean floor It's Porky's Ocean Patrol, yes, Porky's Ocean Patrol Ahoy my friends, welcome to Porky's Ocean Patrol A show with me, Porky, and my friends Georgie, Carno, and you, my ocean patrollers Together, we'll discover all about our great southern reef the wonderful sea creatures that call it home and how we can all keep our oceans happy and healthy. Uh, excuse me, friends. Looks like one of my ocean patrollers has a question. Ahoy, Ollie. What's on your mind? Hi, Porky. I was wondering what happens to the shampoo bubbles after I rinse them out of my hand they go down the drain. Ooh, excellent question. My friend and marine scientist, Georgie, will help. Georgie! <laughs> I'm right here, Porky. You see, Ollie, all of the water from a bath or shower is rinsed down the drain and into our beautiful oceans, including the shampoo bubbles rinsed from your hair. But some shampoos, like other common bathroom products, such as toothpaste and facial wash, can have nasty, tiny plastics called microbeads. A microbead is a super small piece of plastic, about one millimetre in size or even smaller. No bigger than a grain of sand. That's right, Porky. They can be hollow or solid and come in a range of shapes. But sadly, they don't break down, which means they never really go away and they can litter our beautiful oceans forever. And lots of my sea friends like fish, lobsters, planktons, sea urchins and even sea sponges sometimes think these microbeads are food. But they are not food. They are harmful to our sea friends. And if you eat fish, you could also be eating the microbeads. Yuck! Gross! But Georgie, we must be able to stop microbead pollution. Yes, you can. Ask your parents to help you check the labels of your bathroom products to see if they contain these harmful ingredients to avoid. If your shampoo does contain microbeads, don't just throw it away. They can end up in our beautiful oceans through runoff water anyway. You could ship them back to the manufacturer and tell them why you're avoiding the product. And most importantly, only look for bathroom products without those microbead ingredients. Porky, is it true that leafy sea dragons slurp up their food using their long noses like a drinking straw? They sure do, Billy. It's true. Their favourite food is a tiny crustacean called mycid. Since they have no teeth, they suck them up through their pipe-like snout and small mouth. And that's not all that makes them a pop star. Leafy sea dragons, or leafies to friends like us, are a type of fish that live in just one place in the whole entire world. And that place is right here in the Great Southern Reef. Because they are so pretty and very unusual, some divers started taking them home as pets. So not cool. So now they are a protected species here and they are even South Australia's marine emblem. Thankfully, leafies have almost perfect camouflage which means they can be invisible in seaweed. Super helpful to avoid being eaten by other fish. But this also means sometimes people can't see them and they can often be found very close to jetties. So keep an eye out when snorkeling and don't touch these fragile beauties. Fun fact, unlike people, the boys keep the baby leafies on the sticky underside of his tail, a brood patch. The girl leafies will put 250 bright pink eggs onto the boys' brood patch. The boys then carry them around until they are ready to be born, usually about four to six weeks. How cool is that? The ocean, known as sea country, is an important part of Aboriginal culture, and we all play an important role caring for the sea. My friend Kano can help us learn more about Aboriginal culture. Hey, look, Porky, you're getting another call. Nina Marnie, Emily. Nina Marnie, Porky and Kano. Can you please teach me some Aboriginal words? Sure thing, Emily. You know, 
there used to be about 500 different Aboriginal languages. Now there are only 150 that remain, which is still a lot to learn. As my family are from the Ghana country, the traditional land of the Adelaide Plains area, I'll teach you some words in Ghana language. Awesome! Can you teach me too, Kano? Oh, sure thing, mate. The more the merrier. Let's put it into a song. You all know the head, shoulders, knees and toes song, right? Let's do that, but we'll do it in Ghana language. Okay, ready? Mukura kataka matpa jina matpa jina Mukura kataka matpa jina matpa jina Minna yuri tia matla Mukura kataka matpa jina matpa jina Mukura kataka matpa jina matpa jina Mukura kataka matpa jina matpa jina Minna yuri tia matla Mukura kataka matpa jina matpa jina Did you get the right answer? Let's dive into today's puzzle to do at home. Can you help to keep our oceans healthy with fish scramble? It's easy to play. Just unscramble the fish words and use the numbered letters to discover the secret phrase about responsible fishing. Ready to play? Go to my website to download and have a whale of a time. You can become a Porky's Ocean Patroller too and protect our wonderful sea creatures and their homes by taking your very own Porky's Ocean Pledge. Find the special POP Pledge Certificate with the link I've put in the description. Thanks for watching. It's been swell. See you next time. Porky's Ocean Patrol.